This is part 3 of the series, Every 5 Star General in American History. If you haven't seen parts 1 and 2, they're linked in the description below. In those videos, George Marshall, Douglas MacArthur, Dwight Eisenhower, and Omer Bradley have all been discussed. The next and final General of the Army is Henry Hap Arnold. He was born in Pennsylvania to the prominent Arnold family on June 25, 1886. Interestingly enough, Benedict Arnold was one of Hap Arnold's ancestors. His father, Herbert Arnold, wanted Hap Arnold's older brother, Thomas, to take the entrance exam to get into West Point. Thomas refused, and it fell to Henry to take it. He took the entrance exam for West Point and got in. He graduated and joined the infantry, but didn't like the duties assigned to them. In 1911, he applied to join the Signal Corps to fly a plane, and learned how to fly one from the Wright brothers, the people who invented the airplane. Arnold was the first pilot to fly over the Capitol, as well as to have a congressman as a passenger. He also served as a stunt pilot in silent films. In 1917, during World War I, he was promoted to the temporary rank of colonel, becoming the youngest colonel in the U.S. Army. During the interwar period, he had a few setbacks. He had several accidents which required hospitalization and was temporarily transferred to Fort Riley, which was considered a dead end to anyone's career. However, during a war game, Major General James Fasher was impressed by Arnold's performance, and Arnold was sent to the General Command and Staff School, where he graduated a year later, in 1929. He then took command of the 1st Bombardment Wing, and in 1935, he was promoted to the rank of Brigadier General. He became the Chief of the Army Air Corps in 1938, the Air Force wasn't established until 1947, becoming a Major General. He became a Lieutenant General in December 1941, and in March 1942, his title was changed to Commanding General Army Air Forces. During World War II, he pretty much oversaw any and all air-related activities, and he was for the incendiary bombing of several German and Japanese cities. In March of 1943, he was promoted to the rank of general with four stars. From 1943 to 1945, though, he had four heart attacks, from what his doctor said was overwork. In December 1944, he was given his fifth star, becoming a general of the army. When the atomic bomb was dropped on Japan, he wasn't too fond of it, he said that it was unnecessary. On May 7, 1949, after the Air Force was established due to an act of Congress, he changed from a general of the army into a general of the Air Force. About seven and a half months later, on January 15th, 1950, he died in Sonoma, California at the age of 63. Those are all of the five-star generals. There is, however, another rank that's more senior to it, one that some consider to be a six-star general, and that's the rank of General of the Armies. Only two people have ever received it, and they were George Washington and John J. Pershing, the leader of American forces during World War I. It was first given in 1919, as a kind of award to Pershing for his commanding of American forces in World War I. Pershing himself only ever wore four stars on his uniform, though. There were attempts to get Douglas MacArthur, George Marshall, and Henry Arnold promoted to the rank, but all of those attempts failed. In 1976, for America's bicentennial, or 200th anniversary, George Washington was promoted to the rank of General of the Armies. In 1992, however, when asked, the United States Army Institute of Heraldry said that they considered Pershing's rank as only five stars, and that Washington, even though he was the same rank, outranked Pershing. Again though, Pershing himself only ever wore four stars. So, those are all the five-star generals in American history. If you liked the video, then be sure to subscribe and like. Thank you for watching Explained. New videos, every other Friday.